Hey everyone, this is Sean Yurt Curran. You've heard me on WIB on the radio, and you can also catch me on the new Hulu series, Death in the Dorm, Season 2. I just wanted to introduce you all to my law firm, the Yurt Curran Law Firm. I'm located over in Fondren on Mill Street in Jackson, Mississippi. I've got over 18 years of law practice under my belt, including a decade as a felony prosecutor in Hines County and at the Mississippi Attorney General's office. I spent all those years putting bad guys away. Now let me help keep you out. You can call me anytime at 601-906-909 for a consultation or just if you want to talk about something about your case. I'm committed to helping you navigate the complexities of the legal system, which I know can be difficult and confusing and downright scary at times. Let me help you use my experience to explain the system to you and how it works and how I can best help you. You can call me again at 601-906-9094 to discuss any of this and any of your worries. Trust me to handle your defense where it is going to be my priority and your future will be my focus. All right, you've tuned in to the Free Range Human Show Choice, your daily dose of reality radio. This is the Clay Edwards Show. I am, of course, Clay Edwards. It is a Thursday morning here in central Mississippi, and we're just going to jump straight in here. Uh, We're not going to take any phone calls today on the Mazda of Jackson phone line. We've got two guests in the studio, so I don't want to... Get, a, get it going too many directions. So we'll just, uh, to honor our sponsors, we'll say this interview today is brought to you by Mazda of Jackson. If you guys have any questions, I would like to keep it to the text line, the Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944. Or, of course, you can hit me up on any of my social medias, at Save JXN. But uh, the text line is the most proficient and efficient at 769-241-1944. Uh, I've got my regular cohort, Mr. Sean Yurk Karan, here in the studio. And our guest this morning is the, um, I, I don't throw the word legendary around too long, but I'm going to do it for this man here, the legendary Jerry Mitchell. Jerry, thank you for getting up, coming out here this morning, brother. Sure. Absolutely. Glad to be here, Clay. Uh, so what we're going to be discussing today is the... I wouldn't say it's the end, but we're we're really close to the end of this goon squad stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll see where what the end is. I mean, I think that's what we don't know at this point. But obviously, we had the sentencing. Uh, we we ended in terms of the sentencing of these six law enforcement officers, five of them Rankin County uh, sheriff's deputies and one original police officer. Yeah, um, Sean and I have discussed this. I would safely say, as far as radio media. Probably more than anybody else, right? Has we've done multiple, multiple shows on it, and it's a very interesting thing because I, me, I'm a pro law enforcement guy, and I think most all sure. of us are, right? Oh yeah. And I didn't want to believe all this was true, and I, I didn't talk about. It. Well, you knew about it. I live in Brandon. I mean, you hear about it. You knew there was something going on. Some accusations. Then you heard the accusations, and, and with so much that goes on in the world, so many false flags, so to say, when it comes sure. to police abuse, I, I was like, man, that didn't happen. And then when it did and it came out and y'all's story came out, and then the follow-up with the other, what was it, 27? Um, yeah, that's what we, we were exposed, you know, oh, oh, nearly 20 years of similar cases. It was at that moment that I had to say, okay, this really happened. You know, there's no denying this. and th- Yeah, they pleaded guilty in August of last year. Yep. And, and then, of course, our story came out. This has been going on for two decades. And, and that's just what we know. No, and, and yeah. exactly. And, uh, you know, and you kind of presume, as, as kind of a cynical reporter over the years, you kind of presume it may go back farther than even that. That's just what we were able to document. In, in, indeed. So they did the sentencing yesterday. Um, I, there were some people that were holding out hope that they would get more time, and but but I think on, they on they the got more side. than the, yeah yeah it, it's concurrent. So essentially, essentially the federal sentences are going to be the the sentences and the state time is just concurrent with that time. So. Yeah, um, I want to ask a question because sure. I, I, I was doing a live stream last night talking about some stuff and and this came up, and one one, one thing that. It's a little myth busting here, if nothing else. Maybe you know the answer. One one thing that comes up is how did the deputies end up at that house? I, I've heard multiple stories that Well, it was a I mean, quote unquote in their in their eyes problem house. You know, this this there'd been a actually been a homicide at that house, uh not that long before, you know, many years earlier. 
Uh, so there have been, there have been, this was a house that, that was kind of known in terms of, um, and, and um, in general, they were um, really hitting the Robin Hood community. You know, that was a real popular area for, for these, uh, for this shift. It was a shift, actually. It was a late shift that became, they called themselves the Goon Squad. This is not something that uh, the media coined or something like that. They actually did themselves. And but even, ironically, they did have a coin. Yeah, I guess say, <laughs> but they did a law enforcement coin. I actually talked to the deputy, interviewed the deputy that, um, that they basically hired to um, make the coins for him. He, he, that's what he does. He does law enforcement coins. And so it had Rankin County Sheriff's Office on one side and Goon Squad on the other with a little mobster guys, you know, uh, you know, kind of cartoons or whatever. The Lieutenant Middleton's Goon Squad. I think yep, that's what it said, L- Lieutenant it. Middleton's Goon Squad. Yeah. So had there been any interaction with the two guys that night and the Goon Squad previous? Because I've heard that they were told to stay away from there. That that, and I'm not trying that to. Paint, I'm not trying to. Paint that I don't fix, know. I, I mean, the, the two, the just, two, the, the two black men. Is yes, that what you're talking about? Yes. Um, Parker, uh, Parker and Jenkins. I, I do not know. I do not know whether they've been told that or not. Uh, we do know uh, a neighbor supposedly called Brett McAlpin, and 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 that's how this all began that's the part that has fascinated and and, and again i don't know we just don't know for a fact beyond that what 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 really was there more involved you know which is a good question that's the part that's fascinated me is this neighbor with everything that was a white woman yes and the two black men were living there or staying there or whatever the situation was. Yeah, so the the neighbor allegedly calls and says, you know. There are these two black guys over here. Yes. Something along those lines. Paint me shocked that the feds didn't find this neighbor and pull them into this from a conspiracy. Sean, would you say, I mean, what, what would, what could they attach this neighbor to? Or yeah, charges I'm, I'm not sure, you know, with the with the a federal crime, but you know, I'm more familiar with state. But I think there could be maybe some sort of conspiracy to commit aggravated assault, conspiracy to. Well, know, if that was the of, intent, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. If it was some, it, it depends on what the intent of the whole thing was, right? But you know, if it escalated, I think you maybe you could charge them as an accessory before the fact to right. anything. That would probably be the best way to do it. Um, and there were you know, obviously be on the state side, yeah, on obviously. the state side. That's yeah. what, yeah, that you know, and that's kind of what I think we've discussed with about Brian Bailey in the past where I feel like, you know, there's a possible maybe an easier state charge there if he knew about any of these other incidents. Maybe he was, you know, and I don't know necessarily a conspiracy with him, but maybe an accessory for the fact. Gotcha. Because I'm just surprised that they haven't. That accessory we haven't before seen. or accessory after? I think, well, it depends on what the situation was, obviously, what it would mm. be. I think um, if he knew about it, if he knew it before they were going to do, do this, it, yeah. if he was, yeah, I think that. Then it would could, be before, mm-hmm, obviously. That's when I, yeah. It's interesting. And, I just, uh, I, I'm just surprised that we haven't found out who this neighbor was in the midst of all this. You know, you know, like I was telling you all before the show, and you know this, Clay. I'm obviously I went to high school in that community, and I know exactly the street where this happened. And I mean, it's not they're they're not like you know kind of subdivision where it's right, right, but there are there are some houses on the street that are closer together. So and everybody out there knows each other. I mean, yeah, that's the way is... that community. Is and I mean I figured you know somebody everybody knows who that person is I don't I have not heard who it is I've heard stories of who it is but I don't have that from yeah, that yeah it's uh, it would it say in, in in Mississippi anyway and especially in Rankin County there's not six degrees of separation I think it's right <laughs> yeah <laughs> one one and a half maybe Cause, at the cause, most cause that's almost off of I think off of Cato Road out there yeah. and. Uh, that a lot of those people went to the Puckett School District, you know. So, and a few of my friends from high school have kind of called me and told me, like, "Hey, that's the house that we used to hang out with." You know, we hung out a house down the street from there, so Definitely. I kind of know exactly where it is. Yeah. All right. So, what we you mentioned Bailey? Why don't we start there? Sure. Um, Jay, what do you what what do what do you feel? What do you think Jay, Bailey should do? Do you, I mean? Do, I guess it's such an open ended question here. Well, it's his call. I mean, uh, he's made pretty clear he's gonna he's not he's riding this out. He's not going to resign. Uh, obviously, there've been the NAACP and and I guess there've been some others too that have 
call for him to resign, but he's made clear he's not going to do that. So, so what's the question? What the feds are going to do? Is that the is that what you're trying to get I, into? I, I guess so. I mean, Sean has suggested that that Bailey, of course, doesn't resign because it's a bargaining chip. With well, the yeah, feds. I don't. I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's his. That's his call on what he decides to do. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the feds do. I, I mean, like I, it's pretty clear this is not over on mm-hmm. the federal side of the investigation. So, um, and as our reporting kind of documented, there, there was more than six people. Like these six people are the ones that are going off to prison. But the reporting that uh, Brian Howie and, and, and Nate Roosevelt did for us, uh, which ran in uh, Mississippi Today, ran in the New York Times, um, documented a number of other people who were ele- at least allegedly involved in other pretty horrific, you know, violence. Um, the the one that comes to mind uh, mm-hmm. from those from that other reporting yep. is the the guy that they melted the the, oh, yeah, the, the awful, can opener or the bottle opener, the nutcracker, nutcracker the nutcracker the nutcracker yeah. on. I mean, he had. It's not like he. he, There's actually proof of this. It's not like just you know. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) There's not just you know that somebody saying that, which you know that's kind of maybe becomes your first instinct in in hearing something like that. But yeah, and or Rick Loveday. I mean, that was just here. He was a Hines County deputy. Yeah. And and the way they treated him, and um, you know, stole his guns. Stole his ammunition. I mean, I mean, that's the thing that's just really unreal about this to me. It's just like it, it, this mentality that began to kind of take place where they thought, hey, it's okay if we take their stuff. It's okay if we, you know, beat them up or whatever, you know. And it was a real common theme for them for whatever reason to take food like the food from the kitchen or whatever, and whether it's milk or, you know, potatoes or whatever it was, and, and they would, or cake in Rick's case, they took, he had a chocolate cake on the counter. Wasn't even his cake. They took it and smeared it in his face. And what's going on with that? Was that the guy that had the icing in his safe? Or whatever, because he was hiding his ice. No, that was another one. That was okay. another I case. remember that. Yeah, yeah, he call. hid icing in his in his uh, safe. Could you right. imagine their disappointment? They open up the safe and there's icing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's like you know, because drugs, ice, stuff like that, and there's literally icing in there. Yeah, they're, they're breaking it in the safe and they find out it's nothing but icing. It's kind of disappointing, and he was hiding it from his wife. Wasn't yeah, he? Was, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's great. All right, let's do that. Let's take a break. When we come back, I want to start at the beginning of this and how this whole story unfolded and became the story that it is. This is the Clay Edwards Show, joined here live in the studio this morning with Jerry Mitchell and Sean Yerkeron on 103.9 FM WYAB. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show here on 103.9 WYAB. Hey guys, you got, got a need for any heavy equipment rental? Get over to Reliable Rental Equipment right there in North Jackson. Bunch of storms came through, coming through. I'm seeing trees down everywhere. Maybe you need a rollback dumpster to clean up some storm damage. They got it all right there at Reliable Rental Equipment in Jackson. You can check them out online. See my buddy Reddy, Teddy McRaney over there. ReliableRentalEquipment.com. ReliableRentalEquipment.com. Com. We're going to be telling you about some other great sponsors that can help you out through the storm damage and stuff here throughout the day. But now we're going to go back to our interview with Jerry Mitchell, and we got Sean York in here as well. Jerry, are you officially with Mississippi Today? Is that who you work? Yeah, for yeah, yeah. We we had our own nonprofit, Mississippi Center for Investigative Reporting. We're now under Mississippi Today's umbrella, so we're very much a part of them and happy to be a part of them. Good stuff there. So. Let's go back to the beginning of the same, man. So this, sure. how long ago do we think all this started? About 20 years? I mean, it's kind At of verifiable least. there. Yeah, well, we have documentation back that far. I mean, McAlpin has been involved in this kind of stuff for since, since almost he started at Rankin County Sheriff's Department that we, you know, we were able to document in some way. Yeah. You know, we had talked about this during the break and during those other, that big drop of, of documented cases that mm-hmm. I guess didn't get investigated, kind of brushed away. One of the things I, 
that really make my ears stick up was the fact that they said that none of these people got caught with more than four hundred and fifty dollars worth of drugs or four hundred fifty dollars cash. Four hundred dollars worth of heroin. That was that the was biggest. It. That was the biggest. That was the biggest thing that, that in any of those cases, which was real striking to me too. Yeah. Well, it just, it just says, and, and you made a great point. It's like, are we busting drug dealers or drug users? And I just, I, I don't, I just look at it kind of a numbers perspective of what it costs to house a criminal. Is yeah, this, is this compare good business that, for the state. Compare that. Compare that to rehab. I mean, how much cheaper is it to do rehab than it is to hold someone in a jail and feed them and take care of all the medical needs and et cetera, et cetera? Um, it's 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 pretty expensive. It's not it's not cheap. And you know, then you you ruin their life. Yeah, it's it's a it's a. I mean, I think that's something that ought to be looked at. You know, and we're talking about looking at that ourselves in in terms of, you know, what what what. You know, what drug amounts are there in other cases? You know, that kind of thing. Well, I just look at it. You send somebody to, to jail for, let's say, five years. Right. For, for some dope. You could have sent them to rehab for six months or a year. And I'm not making excuses for the people that made no. bad mistakes. Either. I don't want to come across and, like that. Yeah, and it's not that they don't need help. I mean, the arrest, it, it, it's not don't arrest them. Maybe they need to be arrested to go get some help. You know what I mean? It, it kind of... At least in my mind, that this to me, jails and prisons have not really changed in a lot of ways for thousands of years. We we just kind of have the same system that we inherited, you know, that's been going on for thousands of years. Jails and prisons, and it's not that maybe the those things aren't necessary, but maybe we need to rethink. You know, it, this is what always reminds me of that in the criminal justice system reminds me of you, 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 you've got a toolbox and all you really have is a hammer <laughs> you, and, you, and maybe you really need a screwdriver, <laughs> but all you got is a hammer. You know? I haven't heard it put that way. I like that. That's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. Um, it, well, it just, I, I looked at that and the first thing I thought about was, are they are they stealing money and drugs? If that's the if the, if that if that's the most that they were able to to pin somebody with, yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems like a harsh punishment for basically an eight ball worth of dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm you know I think this is something we need to absolutely. I'm glad you guys are talking about it because it's something we as society need to talk about and think about. What were we investing? Because this is what we're doing. We're investing taxpayer money. Into this, into what we're doing, and if all you're doing is busting drug users, oh, your numbers look great. Number, look how many arrests we're making. And I think typically for people in the public, they're thinking these are you're busting drug dealers. Mm -hmm. But if what you're really doing is busting drug users, what are you accomplishing? What's what's? And if all you're doing is put them in jail. And then maybe even prison. What are you? What are you accomplishing? You know, Clay and I have talked about this extensively, actually. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think the war on drugs started in, during the Nixon administration. Yes. And so we're fifty years past that point now. Yep. And it, I don't even. I've said this many times. I don't even call it. It's not even a war because we lost it a long time ago. It's oh a yeah. War. I mean, the, the the drugs won. Yeah. That's where we are. Medical now. marijuana got voted in in Mississippi. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's. Uh, it didn't think I'd be alive to see the day. Yeah. I, I, nor did I. I, it, it's created just a war on our own people. And I think is what what the war on drugs right. accomplished. It didn't really accomplish anything but that. And now, and we're still perpetuating the same problem. I think kind of goes with what you're saying here. We're not rethinking how to attack this instead of yeah. just let's put them in jail. Like that's the only you know. Strategy. Well, I'll give this as an example. I'm not saying this is the answer, but I'm just saying this is at least thinking about these things. Is there are now jails being established in places like Kentucky? Um, in Ohio, where essentially when they bring the people in, it's like a rehab. It's not like a regular jail. It's like designed to really get people help. You know, if they've got a drug problem, okay, here's rehab right here. <laughs> you know, they've got it set up where um, meant for people to to get help. Well, just me growing up in South Jackson back in the nineties and. I battled um, my own drug problems throughout my career of owning nightclubs. And the majority of my friends that went to jail, that have been to jail, 
went to jail for these very things, for drug use, not drug dealing. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've watched that destroy lives. We just got a text on the Guns and Gear text line from Kristen, and she goes, well, who would pay for it? Who would pay for the rehab? Well, the, the state, if they're paying for housing the prisoners now. So what if you reduced your jail population by half? I'm just yeah. throwing out a hypothetical sure. number. But let's say you reduced your jail population by half. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you've got plenty of money to pay for rehab for, you know, however many people. It's well, cheaper. Rehab is cheaper than jail. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Or like prison. Prison is over fifty bucks a day per per inmate. Well, and cheaper in the long run too, because oh yeah, you know, don't repeat. You know, have the repeat exactly. Behavior. Prison's not rehabilitating anyone. It, no, you know, we're t- if we're in the, you know, I know we're in the business of punishment. We also say we're in the business of rehabilitation, but we're not. We don't do that. And that would actually not on a long, serious level. Not, yeah, not on a serious level at all. I think and they um I think that would actually long term these people may not repeat offend, so that's gonna save Correct. us money on that end, you know. Exactly. No I, and I, they're I, tax paying citizens and therefore right. productive citizens, et cetera. What if you can keep just keep a felony off the record? You know, oh, yeah. first, Look, first time and, Exactly. And and you try to and keep people in society. And that's the other part of this that's that I think again we need to re, kind of rethink some of this stuff. Let's say drug, let's say drug court, for example. The only way you can, and you know this, the yeah. only way you can get into drug court is if you're a first time offender. Yeah, that's what I recall from that from a while ago. Yeah, yeah, you know, like you're a prosecutor. The only way you can kind of funnel someone to a, 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 a you know, to that program, the drug court. Mm-hmm. Is if they're a first time offender. If they're not a first time offender, and it's or a, they mess up, <laughs> too bad. And there's all these conditions. I wasn't the drug exactly. court prosecutor, but I remember it being very difficult to get into drug court in the first yeah. place. And and the actual program is very difficult to complete. You right. Know, it's it's not an easy just. Yeah. And, and if you mess up, which if you're a drug user is common. Yeah. You know. <laughs> right. th- then 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 you you get kicked out and you can't you can't go back. Yeah. And and. I know people are going to be listening to this. We have an extremely conservative audience, myself included. Yeah. And, and, and you think, oh, y'all are just living in a, in a liberal la-la land where – Well, it's uh, not just, liberal or conservative. I, I, I don't think. think so either. That, that's my point. And they – How do we want to spend we, our money? You know? Exactly. And I just – I can look and say this ain't working. Mm-hmm. The prison system as as constituted for nonviolent criminals, drug users, it ain't working. It's sending people – Back into the rea- back into the world as a more professional gonna, drug user. I interviewed a guy the other day. He, oh yeah, they get more drugs. They can have more drugs in prison than they can have on the street sometimes. I interviewed a guy the other day who had gotten into drug court and actually sobered up as part right. of hoping to not go to jail. Right. Went to jail and came out an addict. Oh yeah, I've heard that too. And it took him a couple more years to get his life together after getting out of jail from the addiction he got. In, in jail. jail. Now, he could have just not done the drugs in jail, understood. But that that's kind of the point I'm making here is, like, there's drugs in jail. But, I mean, heck, I can't really blame him. I mean, if I'm in jail, I'm probably going to be getting high. I mean, I'm, yeah. just, I mean, I'm sitting there. That's Yeah, what, I, I, you know. well, there's a lot more incentive, I mean, yeah. to, to get high. It's like, man, this is a miserable situation. I just <laughs> want to escape it in some way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so I guess going back to the, the goon squad stuff. Sure. There's a lot of... I, I just look at like the, this ripple effect of of cases and people who are going to come out of the woodwork now. And well, look frankly, at the should. case. And look at the case. The Pearl police officer the other day. Mm-hmm. Did you guys have you guys talked about yeah. that? Uh, making him lick the pee? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a, it's a mentality I think that's out there that's unfortunate, you know. And um, he was young. He was young. He's like twenty seven, I think. It's yeah. like a kid. Yeah. It's like. He didn't. He didn't come in there with that mentality. That was a. That was something he was taught. Now he came from Jackson, and then went to work over there. Mm-hmm. Um, I know some people that know the guy, and just this is the only reason I, I know some of the stuff oh, I know yeah. about him. But yeah, you, you it, in Rankin County, there's this f around and find out attitude. In Jackson, there's not enough of that. And look, I'm a guy. I say this no. all the time on here. I, I believe in. Being able to live, move within a little bit of the gray area. I had a couple officers take a liking or disliking to me, however you want to look at it, and sure, you know, tuned me up pretty well. And I'm the kind of guy that takes a tuning up and I take advantage of it, and I go on about my life. Now, what the goon squad did is completely beyond the the, right, sca- beyond the, pale, the pale of of, right. of tuning somebody up and living in the gray area. They 
they were over there with complete disregard for how you a civilized society works. Correct. And it just it just took it to a whole nother level. Sean, do you have anything? Um, no, I mean, I think I'm kind of with you, Clay. I think you and I have discussed that. I think that being the nature of being a law enforcement officer, sometimes things get pretty rough. You know, oh, the, yeah. the nature of that job. I think we understand that. And, um, you know, I primarily prosecuted violent crimes. And, you know, when you're, you're chasing a child murderer or like a guy that's, you know, killed a few people, I mean, th- the situations are not, they're not pleasant. And it's not right. easy yeah, to yeah. run that. But I think there's a difference between, and, and I think that's what Clay's trying to say too. Like, we're both agree that, like, there's a difference between, like, you're chasing down a murder and maybe it gets a little bit more excessive force than normal than what these guys were doing yeah. for sport. They were, I think they were, they were, in, you know, they were enjoying what they were doing. We said, uh, text them and said, you want to, are you ready for a mission? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like. And they, and they were, you know, no warrant. No, I mean, everything. I mean, it, it, it's the. Uh, well, it seemed to me that they were, they were also, you, you brought up Robin Hood. And I know that community pretty well. And, I mean, they were picking on poor, poor drug people. users. And that were, you know, people. And, that, lar- and largely white, we might add. I mean, because mm-hmm. I think sometimes people are thinking, well, this is. You know, from a racial perspective. That's actually the point. I made I made mm-hmm. it a point to drive home once we got into that second half of this. Yeah, the was, once our story came out, mm-hmm. we made clear that, look, this is – most of the people are white. Yeah. And I think that that shifted the court of public opinion, too, to, mm-hmm. to, to people who were like me, didn't want to believe this, see a lot of these kind of racial incidents get blown out of proportion or false right. flagged. And then it's like, well, hey, oh, crap, it's happening to us, too. Right, you know, they were equal opportunity destroyers here. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes, and I, and I think that really peeled the, open the public's eyes. And what's right. hard about a lot of that too is that you know when you're in this, I'm speaking from the DA side, right? You, know, you get complaints from defendants all the time. And, oh, of course. And ninety nine percent of the time, it's bogus. Like the stuff that right, they right. Say, and that's you know, what makes and that's so difficult to, to it's discern. It's a parse and figure out. Mm-hmm. You know, but if these guys, let's talk about the other aspect of this. These guys admitted they planted evidence. Mm-hmm. have admitted you know all these things it's like well wait a minute what about all those cases these guys were involved in and yeah. the da's office hasn't really addressed how they're going to actually handle this it sounds like pending cases for the most part mm-hmm. only and I mean, what, how that. many other how many other cases are have there been where there's been planted evidence or there's been that they, they forced a confession or they didn't use a warrant or you start name listing off all the things here that they did. Let let let's hold that right there. Sure. I'm glad you got there. That's somewhere I wanted to go. We'll be right back here live on the Clay Edwards Show with Jerry Mitchell and Sean Yurkron. I got all y'all's texts coming in on the Guns of Your Text line. We'll read some of your questions here coming up, maybe in hour two. We'll be right back. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show here live on WYAB. Hey, guys, you got any trees down? Get in touch with my friends over at Advanced Tree Care today. Give them a call, 601-455-TREE. Licensed, bonded, and insured in business for over 40 years right here in central Mississippi. I know you got some trees down because I've seen them coming up Highway 49 this morning. I couldn't even get to the station yesterday because there was trees in the middle of the road. So, Give them a call, Advanced Tree Care, 601-455-TREE. If you get Missy on the phone, wish her a happy belated birthday. Yesterday was her birthday, and I wanted to be able to wish her a happy birthday here on the radio and didn't get the chance to. So a happy belated birthday to my old high school classmate, Miss Missy, over there at Advanced Tree Care, 601-455-TREE. All right, man, we've got Mississippi Today's Jerry Mitchell here in the studio, as well as former 10-year Hines County Assistant DA, Sean Yurkaran, we're talking about the Goon Squad, the fallout, and we go down some rabbit holes. It's kind of our thing here. Rab- we could rename this show Rabbit Holes. Yeah. And because uh, we, we get way off course sometimes. So I'm actually going to do something unique. I'm going to stay on course and pick up where we left off in the last segment. We were talking about other pending cases yep. and the, the, sort of the legal fallout from other yep. stuff. Because, I mean, if you're, if you're an attorney representing somebody who has a – Pending case with these guys, you got to be looking at your chops, right, uh, Sean? Uh, if the, uh, to call them as witnesses to testify, yeah, but, I don't think I don't think they're going to be called as witnesses to testify no anything. Way. Yeah. There's oh no yeah, I, will, I mean, I'm sure that'd be wonderful if they did, but I doubt the DA would do something like that at this point. It's just they're not a call yeah, they're not going to be credible at this point. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think the DA uh, he's already indicated publicly that they're 
reviewing these pending cases? And then what about the, the ancient cases? Or I say ancient. I just people, you know, cases that have already been done. Um, people who have gone to jail and already gotten out. Yeah, there I, doesn't appear to be, at least we'll find out. They're still not talking to me about it. So I don't know what they're planning along those lines. Um, I know that Andre DeGras, who's a state public defender, has suggested that uh, the legislature give his office some money so they could have some kind of review process, like have an investigator, let's say, to be able to hire. To, so say someone says, oh, yeah, they, they planted evidence on me or whatever they're saying, you know, whatever the, the claim is, then they could actually investigate it and they could say, oh, yeah, this is legit uh, and file a, file a, a PCR for you know, post-conviction relief. Is and, what that means, and, and maybe yeah. I'm just naive, but I yeah. still want to believe that everything they did wasn't shady and illegal. Like maybe somewhere in there, they still did some some real police work. No, I I I, I presume so too. I presume that most cases were not affected, but then it also does give rise to, you know, as we were talking about before. Whereas in the past, you might think if someone said, oh, yeah, the cops planted drugs on me, mm-hmm. at least for me, my first inclination would be, oh, yeah, right, buddy. <laughs> you know, that would be your first inclination. Just but like na- everybody in jail is innocent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, and so now you've got these guys admitting, oh, yeah, we planted drugs on these guys that didn't have any drugs. So then you're going... Well, okay, maybe there was more of that than we realized. And they had a throwdown gun. That's the other yeah, thing I know. that always had sticks with had me. Had a gun know? in the in the <laughs> trunk as a throwdown. They didn't use it because they thought, oh, we'll just use their gun, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, and they had 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 drugs in the trunk that they were using for the for the for the plant and the drugs. Mm-hmm. That was where I was about to go. And to me, that's the really scary part because you didn't get that out of evidence. You you procured that some other way we had in your trunk uh, they, they they were carrying it around with them and it makes you wonder like you said a throwdown gun mm-hmm. well I, I mean that's kind of interesting you've got it just for that purpose right that means it's not your first rodeo that exactly you've got this. i mean which means you've thrown it probably down before mm-hmm. maybe to make it look like uh you shot someone not in cold blood but in in self-defense or whatever do we have any have you looked in any cases where they did shoot someone or there was a some kind of act like that i I, you know no i mean we've looked at some deaths you Mm -hmm. know i know they uh brian and nate did a story about damien cameron but it was not a shooting it was uh the officers actually kneeled on him that was kind of interesting the pathologist in that case ruled uh which tends to back up whatever law enforcement is saying. I mean, it's just that's the way it's working in Mississippi. And so they rule it, quote unquote, undetermined. Okay. And the guy basically suffocated. I mean, it's what happened to him. Mm-hmm. Was that the yeah. guy that got killed in front of his mom? Mm-hmm. I remember hearing about that. And of course, all that kind of came back up. Yeah, yeah. This we, thing we, unfolded. Exactly. We, we, we did a story about that. But we had four different pathologists look at the photos, look at the look at the autopsy report, all that kind of stuff. Every single one of them came back and said it was a homicide. Really? Every single one of them. So, you know. Did you take that to Dr. Bodden? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I figured. He's a, I went to a conference he gave one time. Yeah, I, I, I've known Dr. Bodden for uh, ever since I met him at the Med Grover's. Med Grover's. Did Med Grover's. Yeah, 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 yeah back in 94. Him. So that's how I got to know him anyway. So I got a couple texts here on the Guns of Gear text line. Um, just following up on our how much it costs to house a prisoner low ends 45,000 a year. Right. Uh, and then uh, another friend of mine who's been through rehab said right. that her insurance was charged 75,000 for a month. Let me make sure I'm looking at that right. Yeah. One month at Oxford rehab center charged her insurance 75,000. I mean, obviously that's you a different probably, you, did, scenario. Yeah. And, and let's say public. Yeah. But let's say you go to rehab for, you know, 90 days. Let's say it's 75 for, or a hundred thousand. You go for 90 days and that's it. Yeah, exactly. It, you know, whereas if you're in jail for a year or two, and I'm sure you could talk about how long sometimes people wait for trial. Yeah, quite, quite, <laughs> quite a bit, quite a bit, especially in Hines County. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it can be years sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, well, and there, and therefore you're paying for every day. You know? So it mm-hmm. ends up, I think in the end, I, th- I would think it would be at least be a wash, probably cheaper. 
Well, I would think, and we're not going to reinvent the criminal justice system here, but I would think at some point you could get some restitution back out of the people. Would you rather be working and giving us fifty, hundred dollars a week or something? Yeah, or you could. You... you could always make them pay toward it a little bit, yeah. you know, as well. Make it as part of the fines or whatever they work off. Yeah, I, I, I can just think of a million other ways than than, than what we're doing. But that's neither here nor there. They're not going to listen to us. Um, the only question I did. So, if sure. there, do you, there would obviously be. You know, documented cases of officer-involved shootings, if there were one. So, there, right, right. so not nothing that NBI are, investigates all this, yeah. right? And so, there was no evidence that they'd ever actually been in a shootout or anything like that. Or I know there've been some shootouts, mm-hmm. but I, I guess it makes me uh, now that we're talking about it, it, makes me curious to go back and look at all those, yeah, those deaths. You know, has there ever been a throwdown gun? I know Deadman has been, supposedly been involved in a number of fatal shootings, for example. Right. That's what I'm – well, that's kind of one of the things Clay and I talked about this before where, you know, they had pled to a bill of information in federal court. Right. right. And that's, you know, for the audience, that's uh, something you can do yeah, yeah. pre-indictment. Exactly. You don't yeah. have to – they weren't indicted, actually, mm-hmm. technically. And People you don't sh- understand the distinction, but that's like, – yeah. Yeah. They Crim- it was criminal information or whatever. Right. A criminal information. So it's – and basically the reason a lot of times you do that is you worked out a deal. You worked out oh, some sort of, of deal. Of course. Um, every time I've done that, there's no reason to not – You'd have worked out a deal and plead to a bill. No, no, you, you're not going to do that. So, I've 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 said this before. I feel like there's all the other stuff that y'all have looked into and whatever else is out there that I'm sure the FBI. Has oh yeah, you know they're looking into it. Or, that they agreed to wrap up into this into this plea. I think that's what you know. Well, you know that's what's going on. Mm-hmm. This is a continuing investigation. I'm gonna. You know that they're already investigating the Lexington uh, Police Department in Lexington for um, policies and practice. Policies and procedures, if I got patterns of procedures, anyway, uh, they're already looking into that in Lexington. I can't imagine they aren't going to do the same thing or aren't already doing the same thing with Rankin County Sheriff's Department. I, I want to get into the, the RICO conversation, but I want to yeah, wait yeah. to wait till the top of hour two so, sure. we don't, so we don't have to cut it short and not give it its due, due no time. Let's, do that. Let's take a break, and we'll come back with a, a last short segment for this hour. We'll read a couple of your comments, and top of hour two, we're going to get into potential RICO Stuff for the Rankin County Sheriff's Department. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. We've got about two minutes here left in the hour, but we've got a whole other hour with Jerry Mitchell with the Mississippi Today and, of course, Sean Yerkeron here in the studio with me. Um, Jerry, with this being an ever-evolving case uh, that it could be it's just branches after branches after right. branches, um, there's still possibly a lot of people out there who have been affected by this that haven't come out yet. Um, right. Is there a way for them to reach out and tell their stories? Yeah, absolutely. We're interested in talking to them. Uh, my email, anyone uh, who has information or wants to point us somewhere, you're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, my email is the letter J, as in Jerry, and then Mitchell, M-I-T-C-H, E L L at and then Mississippi Today all spelled out dot O R G. So um, feel free to reach out and Clay. You're welcome anytime to tell people to point it point in my way. Well, yeah, I mean, well, we hear a lot of stuff. I mean, I, when this first happened, I have several friends on my Facebook that I've known for in real life for years and years and years who have been screaming about their. They, not innocence. They said that you know they they were living a rough life. Sure, but they went they went and spent time in jail for some things that they didn't feel were right. Right, I mean, and, and and I take their word for it. These are guys who are rehabilitated, great citizens today. Today, that right. are that, that still believe they got way over over abused. I guess is the best right. way to way yeah. to put it. So, right. I think there's a lot out there because I mean I, they were so comfortable doing this. Yeah, I mean it's pretty obvious when when you have McAlpin texting, you know. Uh, who, who's up for a mission? I mean, that obviously indicates that's this is not their first rodeo. <laughs> and I, and, <laughs> They've been doing this. You know, what, a case that we haven't, we only got about 30 seconds left here, but, but I want to get this off my chest. A case that we've yet to really talk about is the other one that got lumped in with this. Yeah, like um, Alan Schmidt. Is that the name? I never yeah, knew the name. He got, he got uh, Deadman like dry humped him. It was, it was just yeah. pretty horrific. Yeah. It and is, we interviewed him. Yeah, I, I need to go back and find that because I, I missed that. Because to me, when you present a, and if y'all got kids in the car, I apologize. When you present a sexual um, aspect, I guess is the best way to put this to sure. any of this stuff. I mean, I don't care what the people did. Uh, it's a line too far, 
And well, they used a sex you lose tour. your credibility. Yeah, you, you, they used a sex tour on the two black men, and 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 this guy, you know, on the side I, of the road, right? On the side of the road, basically, you know, pulled pulled it out and 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 slapped him in the face, and and then and then you know, just right. awful. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Unfiltered, no sugar added talk radio you tune back into the free range human show of choice your daily dose of reality radio this is hour two of the clay edwards show here on wyab i told you guys earlier we were going to mention a lot of our sponsors that could help you post storm cleanup storm damage uh the next one is longtime friends of mine watkins construction and roofing hey look if you think you may have gotten any storm damage if you're seeing water in places that shouldn't be give my guys a call And they're going to come out to a complimentary roof assessment. Where I'm from, that means they're not charging you for it. That's free. Uh, Complimentary roof assessment. They're going to let you know, hey, man, maybe you just need a little section fixed. Or maybe you need an entire roof. They're going to work with you the entire step of the way. They're going to work with your insurance company for you. They're professionals at that. That's uh, something else our our legislature is trying to take uh, roofers' abilities way to do is is to work with your insurance company on your behalf. But that's another argument for another day check them out watkins construction inc.com or no more roof leak.com that's watkins construction and roofing over 600 five-star reviews on google you don't get those by accident that's great service right there locally owned locally operated operating statewide and in alabama watkins construction and roofing all right we are get joined gathered here today we are joined here today <laughs> by um uh, Jerry Mitchell, uh, legendary Mississippi reporter, formerly with the Clan Ledger, currently with Mississippi Today. Uh, you saw the, you saw the the, which which movie was it? The Bell the Del, Del Beckwith movie. Oh, Ghost of Mississippi. Ghost of Mississippi. I almost said Mississippi Burning. Ghost of Mississippi. Yep. You had, you you played yourself in that, didn't you? No, I didn't play myself. Uh, well, you Thank know, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking you had a scene in that movie. No, 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 uh, no, no. Benny I, Bennett I, played himself. Benny played, <laughs> Benny himself. played himself. Ed, Ed, Ed Bryson played himself. Uh, there's a Southern Poverty Law Center guy played himself. I think. No, no. Uh, Morris Dees was played by Wayne Rogers. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah, and I actually got to talk to him on the set a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. My, my Mississippi movie history uh, is not as good as I thought it was. No, it's okay. It's okay. It was that one I actually know something about so <laughs> and charlie crisco did not play himself but yeah know, when he was crisco. alive you had to meet him <laughs> i loved i loved charlie you mean the D- didn't play himself no it's <laughs> balling it's balling oh man all right so look point balling who now unfortunately is has got some problems of his got own. some problems of his own and yes he does so may, may, may need a lawyer himself uh, that's something that will not go away uh, no and, I, and, and I'm not a big Baldwin fan, but I don't know that he's guilty on this. I mean, like, it, it, politically, we disagree, but I'm just looking at his stuff. I'm like, man, look, I, I don't like him, but I don't think he did anything wrong. Yeah, I know. It's a, I, it's I a the, real, it's a real, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, what, what's his, what, what, uh, I mean, are, are you saying he knew this? You know, I don't know. It's a great question. I think, yeah. they, and I don't know all the evidence. They just sent the us the armorer, you know, the yeah, ones yeah. that control yeah. the guns. I mean, like, that. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Armor messed up, obviously. You know, unlike a culpable negligence manslaughter theory, I think they call it in New Mexico involuntary manslaughter, which means culpable negligence manslaughter. Yeah, that's more what I would think of it and, as. And I think that, yeah, well, I don't know how that extends to Alec Baldwin, though. I can see the armor thing, but the Alec Baldwin I, was did he have some sort of duty to constantly check the weapon, or I, I don't know. I just it just it the seems fact that he fired it. I don't I yeah. don't know. It's a good question. I, you know. Yeah, uh, so I, I, without going down this rabbit yeah, hole, yeah, well, another I, rabbit I did, hole. I did, I did read that it, he was he was also the executive producer or director or whatever. It's yeah, his yeah, movie. He's, it's ultimately his responsibility, and if he hired someone that was incompetent, da da da. Mm-hmm. But is that a criminal responsibility? It doesn't seem like it is yeah. to me. I don't. That's a that's a good question. Yeah, me either. All right, so let's see here. Where do we want to start? Uh, Rico, Are the, could this the whole goon squad thing get into a Rico? Does Brian have some responsibility to bear in, in in all this? I have defended Brian along, you know, sure. to, to a certain extent here. But the more I look at this, and especially after the other drop of information came, the other twenty twenty seven uh, cases that we know of for sure, I was like, man, if you didn't know about it, shame on you, right? And 
but you it feels like you knew about it because I'm surely there's some procedure in place for these people that call and complain and say these things happen to them. You have to look at it further than just as a junkie pretending they that something right. happened to them. I, and that's the human nature, right? Sure, there's you're going to believe. These are criminals, exactly. wh- whatever. The, no, I, mean, the, I was going to say also, the, the, the point, I think, Clay, is that the let's go back to the subpoenas in 2014 that he had the issue with Michael Gass about he was yeah, 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 his girlfriend. Yeah, you know, he was doing stuff like that, which obviously is not something the sheriff should be doing. He's using the, the – Yeah, he was using grand jury subpoena, subpoena yeah. his married girlfriend's uh, phone records. Yeah, I think there, right there indicates text. that that was a culture that was being you know, perpetuated by him. I mean that's what, that's what that just indicates to me. And so, what yeah, that's, seven and that's pretty much there? that's pretty much confirmed. That's not a mm-hmm. uh, there, there's not like a question of that. Yeah, I went to the AG's office. Jim Hood's office had it, and then it just nothing kind of really happened from that point. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah. So how do we get to Rico on this? That's what something that I've heard. Well, it's a great question, and Rico to explain what it is for those who might not be familiar with the term is racketeering essentially. And it was uh, created, it was a federal law created to attack the mob, essentially. You know, that was really the idea behind it. But it's since kind of been expanded and used uh, in other situations. In other words, if there's a criminal enterprise, essentially, operating. Um, and and so there ha- it has been used against some law enforcement agencies if they're operating you know, allegedly operating as a as a criminal enterprise, and they they can open a, a investigation along those lines, as well as uh, you know, you, you what you could do uh, in terms of a RICO case, it could either be brought against the office itself, and or be brought against specific individuals. So yeah. yeah. What would be the RICO here? I mean, what would be the criminal enterprise? I guess is what I'm asking because it. it an agreement to just beat people up and torture isn't necessarily a criminal enterprise. You know, well, it, you certainly could argue it was. You could argue uh, we've got a lawyer with us, so yeah. it's, it's pretty convenient. Yeah, no, I think I, I think you could. I think you could argue that the sheriff's department was the criminal enterprise, and that you know, and those acts were stemming from that department, which is the enterprise. I think that. Yeah, I think that. I mean, because obviously. These acts that they're committing are, are, are criminal. Crimes. I mean, they're crimes they're doing. Yeah. You know, planning they're carrying out crimes. They're planning evidence. They're mm-hmm. they're doing et cetera, et cetera. And I think there's like 35 predicate acts, which is called a predicate act in right. you know, murder, arson, is involved wire fraud, mail fraud. There's just a bunch of them that are yeah. And you you could stuff. all you, like for example with wire fraud. I mean, all you'd have to prove is they use the telephone in in the act of a criminal. Yeah. To, to in the act of a criminal. Act, basically. Mm-hmm. Going back to what we were saying in the first hour, and, sure. I, and I'm piecing this together in my head in live time here. Sure. Uh, using these drug user charges to get your numbers up, which I'm guessing helps helps get funding from the Board of Supervisors, yeah. federal money. Hey, we I got, presume it does. I don't yeah, know. but I mean, yeah, Me either, yeah. but I mean, it would make sense. You know, hey, we're very productive. We have this problem out here. We need more money to fight this problem. Right. And you're kind of you do creating have, You do have problem. drug seizure money. Now, there's no question about mm-hmm. that. You mm-hmm. have uh, drug seizure money, uh, cars that get seized, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, I, and I've been told by multiple people that when they seize the money now, especially on these big highway busts, they don't reveal that number no, this is their story, not mine. Is that the the public doesn't like hearing about seized money, so they don't advertise that number anymore, which to me just makes it ripe for potential corruption. I know, yeah. Oh, anyway, like, how, your how words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think you know, I think Clay's got a point. He got a point. That's I, it's. There's many departments, as we all know, throughout you know over the last since the war on drugs, like we're talking about that this has been an issue of, and I don't know what they've done at Rankin County. And to most clarify, of their but, like. Big bust? I don't think it's any secret. I mean, most of their big busts are not are on the interstate. Yeah, yeah that's, that's where they that's where they get them. That's yeah, they, um, that, that's where they that's where they get the that's where they get them is the interstate. It's not it's not people driving around town or you know some drug dealer out in Puckett or whatever. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think if they uh, you know I wouldn't put past the goons well anything, but. But anything past them at this point, I, you know, taking drug dealer money does seems like a kind of a small thing. <laughs> you know, it just it doesn't. Well, they seem were like... taking in Rick's Rick Loveday's case. They took his guns. They took his ammunition. Mm-hmm. So obviously, and the and the and the criminal information indicate they were going to. They took some stuff, but they were going to take more, and yeah. then they decided not to. And 
anyway. They had a conscience at that point, huh? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what it, I think this may have been after the gunfire, you know. They decided, well, maybe not. Yeah, you know, I go back to that night there in Braxton. Right. And whenever whenever the movie is made about this, it's going to be called, what was the time between the shooting and when they called Paramount 47 Minutes, something, something like that? Something like that, yeah. Whatever that number is, is going to be, is the name of the movie. The name it, of the movie, yeah. In my opinion. Minutes, yeah. uh, just 47 Minutes of Hell or something like that. Yeah. But you, you go back there and you have to assume that there was a conversation about killing them. I mean, I don't want to put words in nobody's mouth. I'm just just speculating on my, myself because it, it's almost like if if they had died, they avoid all this and they set it up to look like a a self defense shootout. Yeah, you know, judge yep. again. It's just speculation. No, no, on my I, I mean that's you know that's your spec. You're welcome to your speculation on that. I, I don't think it's a wild speculation at all. Certainly on the criminal side of things, if you were thinking as a criminal, you might you certainly would. That would be something that would cross your mind. Well, I mean, at that point, you know, you're like, <laughs> and you're all in. Yeah, you know, you're, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. I you're mean, now a criminal. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, that's what you and I have discussed this many times. And I'm sure everybody that's paid attention to this story has. I mean, if that gun doesn't go off, it, we, nobody we, ever knows about this. Well, that's what's wild about this, isn't it? Like this case wouldn't be known, but not only that, all the other cases that that we found, yeah, wouldn't be known. I mean, this this all wouldn't have been public like this. Mm-hmm. No. Jay, was was there cameras in that house? I mean, I've heard multiple stories that yeah. they took them out and threw them away. Then they, they took just the hard leave. drive. I think is what they did. They took what, the hard drive out and threw it. In the was there and now out in Braxton? There like could be that. internet issues. So there's always been this theory like, well, it should be in the clouds or the hard drive is irrelevant. Or was it was they taken out before? I don't the know. situation after. I guess it just. Is there video oh, well, apparently of this? after, apparently after, and it, and they had, they had been. I know McAlpin had been in that house before, yeah. you know, when, you know when they when they had the homicide before. So they may have been familiar enough with the house to know what to do. You know, right, if you guys have any questions for Jerry Mitchell or Sean, um, I don't know that I'm an expert on any of this stuff, but uh, you can ask me anything as well. Seven six nine two four one nineteen forty four is the Guns and Gear text line. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to get into who polices the police, who polices the sheriffs, and what do we do to change this process somewhat in Mississippi so they can have some accountability or recalls, elections, or something to that extent. We'll be right back on the Clay Edwards Show with Jerry Mitchell and Sean Yorkron. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show here on WYAB 103.9 FM. This segment brought to you by our friends over at Clay Buys Cars. That's right. And selling your car, truck, SUV, I don't care if it's got 3,000 miles or 300,000 miles, give me a shout. 769-241-1944. Shoot me an email. Clay Buys. Go to claybuyscars.com. All my contact information is there. We're writing checks today. For your vehicle. So paying fair market value before you go trade it in somewhere, give me a shout. Maybe I can give you more money for it than the trade-in. That's claybuyscars.com. We're joined here in studio by Jerry Mitchell, Mississippi Day, and Sean Yorkron, a practicing attorney and former Hines County DA. Y'all know Sean. He's my co-host here a couple days a week. Uh, We're talking about Brian Bailey. We're talking about Goon Squad, taking a deep dive down that rabbit hole uh, one of the things that's come up a lot, Jerry, especially because of the timing of how all this worked out with Bailey not having anybody running against him. Right. He kind of wins the, wins another term by default. Sure. And, and people kind of, you know, a lot of people I've talked to feel like they've been sold kind of a, a false bill of goods. Mm-hmm. And like, how do you, how do you get out from under a sheriff? And apparently the sheriff's most powerful position in Mississippi. And you certainly, don't, certainly in rural Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, who, you know, a what can be done moving forward to have a um, a process to remove a sheriff when you have these type cases, if that's right. what the public wants. I don't think it should be at the will of one man. I don't think the governor should be able to. Uh, yeah, eliminate. yeah, yeah. It was uh, there. Too there political. is a provision in the Constitution for this. Now it's 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 very cumbersome. Which is, I think you have to have thirty percent of the registered voters basically petition the governor, and the governor 
appoints a committee and da da da, and you know the committee decides. So it's it's a little bit of that. Uh, currently, uh, one of the more interesting kind of things that's out there in terms of legislation is um, is basically a, a provision whereby they're going to require training for sheriffs as well as state officers. They have already been requiring it for police officers. Uh, they're going to uh, have certification, you know, those kinds of things. Right now in Mississippi, for example, you don't have to have any law enforcement experience to be a sheriff. You can also be a felon and win. Yeah, you can't. Federal. I think it's the only office that you can you can run for as a felon. Yeah, I, do. I remember doing a story about the guy that had been um, imprisoned for taking bribes from bootleggers and uh, and ran for sheriff. Now, he lost, but I remember writing stories about the fact that if he got elected, he couldn't carry a gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, what about so when you have the is it MB, does MBI I mean who is who who investigates these type situations where people if, people feel like let's say for instance of those that other batch of people who have called and they tried to file reports and they were never followed up with yeah who who who, who is the internal affairs for everybody yeah you, you know? don't really have one I mean sheriffs. Kind of rule like kings, really, in in some of these counties. Um, you know, there there's, you know, like, so here we are in a democratic republic, right? And our, our, the Constitution is brilliant in this sense, that you have all these checks and balances with each branch of government, right? But sheriffs didn't come from that, <laughs> They we kind of just barred them from medieval times, you know, and say, oh yeah, because everybody remembers the story of Robin Hood, you know, the sheriff and Robin Hood and all that stuff. So that that's where sheriffs came from. They we just kind of borrowed it from the English system, um, and uh, coroners also. So those are just kind of holdovers from the English uh, medieval system. And um, but yeah, there's not really any policing for that. Um, or requirements, like I said, even to be a law enforcement officer. I mean, you're the only requirement for a sheriff under Mississippi law is he can't be an atheist. Really? really? I did not know that. <laughs> that seems uh, to be a un- I, I'm constitutional just, I'm just, problem. Yeah, well, I'm just telling you what the law says. I did I'm not know telling that. You what, telling you what the law says. You can't be an atheist. Now, you you don't have to be a law enforcement officer, but you can't be an atheist. Okay. I learn something new every day. That's, <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's those Mississippi values right there. Yeah. Now, is that Mississippi or nationwide? That's just Mississippi. No, that's right. a Mississippi statute, actually. That, that is in the code. It's in the I'm code. That up I, I, look it up. I, 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 I'm not leading you astray. That, that's in the code. Well, I know, <laughs> going back to like, God, the last thing I want to do is talk about COVID, but just to make a point about sheriffs and their power. Sure. Um, going back to COVID, I remember that being a big thing is we needed sheriffs that would that were const- doing constitutional policing and not allowing uh people to be arrested for lockdowns and you know whatever right, right, right. whatever else you want to, you want to say there and so that's where like somebody like me finds um, their power very yeah i mean it's a very it's a positive are sheriffs are important and it, but it's it's the story of power anyway which yep. is um uh, you have to be when when someone gets more and more power powerful it's kind of like why did we become a country because we didn't like having a king Mm -hmm. (laughs) we didn't like the idea of a king and we're like okay we don't want a king so we're going to establish all these checks and balances and for the sheriffs in some of these rural counties they 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 kind of rule like kings i mean Mm -hmm. they don't have to answer to anybody uh plus on top of that they run jails that answer to nobody we used to mississippi used to inspect jails we don't even inspect jails anymore. We stopped inspecting jails back in 2017. You know, that was it's interesting that something when I was at the DA's office we used to talk about a lot is that when somebody would run for sheriff and, and the time that I was uh, there, we were, you know, transitioning from McMillan to Tyron Lewis and then right. there was a whole, you know, Victor Mason and then Lee became right. sheriff. I think a lot of people don't understand the sheriff's – one of the primary duties is to run the jail. It was, it, it, that's the really, jail is often the, their biggest headache. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, like Hines especially. I mean, you think it's, of the, the you know the, the problems in jail there. So 
Yeah. Yeah, I kind of thought that you would almost – Maybe I'm just complete nut job here, but I always thought, you know, hey, if you can get the feds to come in and run your jail for you, what's the, yeah. one one less headache for me? But uh, I guess they don't look at it like that. No, <laughs> I, mean, I don't think so. It's, uh, I mean, obviously with the Hines County Jail, which has been a precision problem for I think the past thirty years, when since the time they built it is what I've always yeah, been told. Since, they, since they since Mac was <laughs> <laughs> was sheriff, yeah, and they built it I think in 1994 yeah, around that time, and, uh, yeah. and they decided a, to build it out in Raymond, which was their first mistake. <laughs> yeah, I know they you know they the story I was told they were supposed to put it behind the courthouse. That was the that was the, the original the, plan, the original plan, which would have made a lot of sense. You know, because now what the problem you have is transporting those prisoners from Raymond to the circuit courthouse I mean, in Jackson. It's an incredible expense just mm-hmm. transporting yeah. them. Uh, pre, yeah. Pre-internet, it made bonding out a nightmare, too. Yeah. Because the bail bonds would have to come from Jackson, get your paperwork, take it back to Jackson, mm-hmm. get it signed, and bring it back. They were having to make two trips right. to get you bonded out. Yeah, uh, that's make, right. I mean, it's right. crazy. It was insane. It was wrong-headed from the beginning, and then the construction was bad of the jail, and et cetera, et cetera. Just keep going. Uh, we got a text here on the Guns and Gear text line, and it's uh, there's a bill, uh, Bill 691, they're working on that allows the Board of Minimum Standards to hold police certifications to investigate misconduct. Yeah, and that's, what, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. so they're able to investigate, like if uh, in terms of certification, let's say a law enforcement officer has allegedly committed a, an act, and for whatever reason, let's say it's not prosecuted criminally. Um, or maybe it is prosecuted criminally, and 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 they they can basically take the certification away, mm-hmm. yeah. and they have they would have an investigator to be able to look into this, not just rely yes. on oh let's say you have to wait till the feds convict somebody or something like that. Is that going to pass, or do we know the status? Yeah, it's already passed the, the house, house? Okay. and the Senate's taking it up. And I'm not sure what the latest is on the Senate uh-huh. side. Gosh, if we're waiting on the Senate and the House to agree on something. <laughs> That's about to say. It's not been the year for that. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you. Um, okay. Uh, the uh, yeah, Senate and House in Mississippi are not that much better than the ones in, in, in Washington, apparently, in <laughs> no. terms of agreeing on anything. It, no. it is wild to see this unfold this year like it has, which, cool by me, I think less is more when it comes to them being able to agree on anything. But there are some laws that I agree with. Yeah, yeah. I think mm-hmm. I think every time they make a new one, they just have to take an old one off the books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, you kind of wonder about that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I got a question here from one of our listeners, Josh. Sure. And he says, and this is kind of going back to a specific incident. So if y'all don't know anything, just say next. But he says, what about the mentally ill guy that was killed in Pillahatchee a few years back? Yep. Conflicting stories that the guy was giving up and just shot into the house. Is that the one that Bailey was involved in directly? Yeah, I think, well, I think I think everybody was out there. Mm-hmm. I think it was it was like a it was a huge shootout. That's the one that some I don't some I don't know that he fired his gun or anything yeah. like that, but uh, he was out there. Uh, he he's lost his immunity on that, I think, or something like that. Was that the one? I don't know. I don't have to look that there up. Was I a, can't remember. I can't remember what the what the latest is on all that. But yeah, yeah there there is a it was. Yeah, it was like everybody, every law enforcement officer, probably from Rankin County, I think was was out there mm-hmm. that that day with the shootout. Interesting stuff. All right, let's do this. Let's take a break. We'll come back. I want to tell you, y'all. Did you have something? You want no, to say no, no. Go ahead. Oh, the, there's some issues with the way warrants are done in Rankin. Yeah, County. Yeah, I, I, I think it's an interesting question to, to ask. We can talk about that. Yeah, and I think we got the right guy in here with us to to answer those questions. All right, so we got Jerry Mitchell, we got Sean Yarkron, and we got Clay Edwards. We'll be right back on WYAB. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. Hey guys, you may be asking yourself, what's for lunch today? Well, I'm glad you asked. Burgers, blues, barbecue. They got three great locations to serve you. Madison, all right there on Main Street. Flowood, right there in Dogwood in front of Dick's Sporting Goods, right next to the all new Chipotle right there. Same building as Chipotle. So if you know where that is, you know where Burgers, Blues, Barbecue in Flowood is. Also, right there in my hometown, my little hide my little hideout, place you can easily find me. Two or three nights a week. Don't tell nobody. Uh, the downtown Brandon location. Their plate lunch specials today are hamburger steak. They have, they offer hamburger steak every day. When you have an award winning hamburger and you got burgers in your name, you got hamburger steak already ready already. And my favorite kind of steak, country fried, is on the blue plate today at all three locations. And of course, you can try one of their award winning burgers, the cheese sticks, which is not fair to call them sticks. They're logs. 
Try those. They're hand-battered and fried. Can't go wrong with them. That's burgers, blues, barbecue. You're on a diet? You're on a diet? Uh, doing keto? They got you, man. Go get the hamburger steak with some green vegetables. Boom. You are in it to win it. Don't forget they got multiple food trucks available for all your special event needs. And they can handle any catering job from five to 5000 Check them out online, burgersblues.com. If you're out hungry for breakfast this morning, the Madison and Flowood locations serve fresh, cooked-from-scratch breakfast six days a week. Well, no, five days a week. And you won't go wrong. Try the chicken and, chicken and waffles. That's, uh, every time I say it, I'm like, i got to get over there. I'm going to skip the show one day and go get some chicken and waffles because there's so few places that actually serve that here in central Mississippi. That does uh, sound good. That it does. It really does. So, uh, <laughs> burgersblues.com we got jerry mitchell mississippi day in the studio we got sean york Quran. um jerry sean and i had a conversation <clears> sure. about two weeks ago it actually got rehashed on twitter by some other folks yesterday and i went back and listened to it i was like man i'm really proud of this segment that we did and i rarely uh-huh. pat ourselves on the back but we were talking about sean brought this up that man there's so many good cops out there ranking oh County. absolutely and really i've had a few of them texting me since we've been on the air this morning and I want to make sure we're not throwing the baby out with the bath. Yeah, here. we don't. We don't want to do that because these are some great guys, and I, I feel bad for them. I feel like there's a black cloud over that thing. I've had a couple of them tell me privately that you know you, they used to go in a place they had on the uniform, and it was it was looked at with, with such utmost right. res- respect, and now they feel like people are looking at them with fear. Yeah, and, and that's just it, it's almost it's Sean unfortunate. The, mm-hmm, yeah. And Sean made the point that it's, it's got to make it. A, a community more dangerous yeah. than it can't than it does safe when people fear not respect right your your main law enforcement agency yeah what i'd said you know let's say you're 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 a black man and you're driving in rankin county you get pulled over and you're just you know you're not you're not a criminal you're not doing anything but you, you got to be a little nervous if you get pulled oh, over yeah. by the rain county sheriffs i mean just naturally yeah and i think you know if you're anybody that lives in that robin hood community you're you're nervous and even though it's a good cop that's pulling you over ain't gonna he's not you know you might be speeding or whatever you're doing and um but i think it just puts that you know obviously fear and 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 it, it yeah. causes like you know a tension that could happen and it puts the it puts the officer in jeopardy too i think oh exactly well you do i mean people may react in certain ways mm-hmm. you know uh, i mean god forbid they pull out a gun or you know what i mean yeah. all those kind of things That's that I mean. are potential uh they can potentially happen and, and I, the anxiety escalates we well, yeah, get a lot of the, tension. exactly the you're 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 increasing tensions essentially you know between citizens and law enforcement which is not what you want you want ideally you know good cop pulls you over you know hey, hey officer you know what you know what can i help you with you know you want that kind of situation and that remains as long as sheriff bailey doesn't resign now i think if he does and you have a new sheriff it comes in and there's a you know overhaul of the department i'm not you know, then that yeah it's going to be interesting to see what happens because man it's not I can't imagine being a deputy right now in uh, Rankin oh. County. It would be a, a – God bless them for doing it, but, yeah. man, it's a tough situation right now. It really is. And, and I try to – I kind of pride myself in keeping my ear to the ground. And, again, I live there a stone's throw from the sheriff's department. I, I'm out in the community all the time. I like to talk to people, whether it's the gym, the bar, or anywhere in between. And this is a conversation because of what I do gets brought up a whole lot. Nope. And, the, and the overarching part of that is people think he needs to – Step down. Whether he's guilty or not, yeah. he needs to step down because of kind of lack of institutional control, if nothing else. Exactly. That's a good point. Yeah, I heard at some point back that it was suggested to him to kind of step down, you know, on an interim, at least on an interim basis mm-hmm. till this kind of all resolved itself and that, that he, he was not a fan of that, that idea. So. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it just it doesn't seem like he's, you know, that's something that he's willing to – now, I don't think – I'm assuming this, you know, the next sheriff's election is not for another, what, three years, or yeah, three yeah. and a half years, so a long time. And I don't think this is one of those things where this is going to go away in people's memories. You know, I don't think this right. is one of those, like, you know, you could say you can mess up at the beginning of your term and people forget because we got short political memories. No, um, I don't think the Goon Squad stuff will be forgotten anytime so, soon. So I don't see him getting reelected were he to run again, but you still got three and a half years. Well, it also he's... depends on who would run against him. I mean, you know, they, we always, you know, there's always presumption, oh, yeah, they, he would, you know, automatically lose. But I think that's because of where we are in this moment in time. Yeah. So, you know, I, yeah. I, I think it's a very interesting case from the political standpoint of 
usually Sean is very correct. You do you mess up at the beginning of your term, you got four years yeah, to auto correct. Fix, fix it out. Yeah. I believe this is a slow drip. Yeah. And there's gonna be a Yeah, it's gonna this is gonna keep going. I mean the feds are gonna c- continuing to investigate, that's obvious. You know, Sean's brought up a great point going back to the original Deadman case mm-hmm. the the of how when the civil the feds civil rights division gets involved, um it, it ain't over. No. Yeah, it takes takes a little bit. They're 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 we may be sitting here a year from now. I mean, you know, they're relentless, you know about Jerry. Their, <laughs> they're they're relentless. I tell you, just yeah. dealing with that Democrat. I told Clay about it, and uh, they they got everybody in that. I mean, I'm doing people that weren't even there, and this went on for a few years. Yeah, and I've said this on the air before. You're not going to be able to throw a rock in Rankin County without hitting an FBI agent for the next few years. I mean, that's just the oh, way yeah. it is. And and they will that division, and I'm sure it's you know most federal uh, prosecution divisions. They're just they're going to look at everybody involved in it, and they're gonna they're gonna turn over every rock and. And, and there, you, we you know, presume there may be. Uh, let's take Bailey out of the equation. Mm-hmm. There could potentially be other deputies, for example, sure. uh, as we kind of pointed out in in the story. I mean, there were at least allegations of other, you know, potential deputies being involved in this kind of behavior. Yeah. Um, somebody just texted in on the Guns and Gear text line and asked, and I, I think I know the answer, but I'll ask you all anyway. If if he is to resign, who appoints a new sheriff? Is it Board of Supervisors? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they do in Hines County. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. how they ended up with Marshawn Chrysler after the last one passed away, and mm-hmm. we had a I don't special election, maybe. Yeah, I think that you would. Uh, yeah, especially since it's more than two years. You know, there's there's it's. I think it's less than two years, and you don't have to have a special election, but it's more than you do. I think that's correct. I one of the other thing I, I love this kind of black cloud conversation because I think it. I think that that it's exists. a great question, you know, and and what's best. For the community, I think it's a great question to have. I'm kind of surprised that the supervisors haven't had more discussion about this. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe they're having all this discussion privately, you yeah. know, but I'm just kind of surprised there hasn't been more public discussion about this like you guys are having, like what's best for the community kind of discussion. Well, I'll say this, coming from a guy that's born and raised in Jackson and familiar with Jackson politics and the way it's gone, it's very, it's very open mudslinging. In Jackson, right. um, nobody's really scared of political repercussions in Jackson because right. everybody would have to keep a head on a swivel. Um, <laughs> yeah, in, sure. in Rankin County, people are people are scared to talk right. about this. People are scared to to pick a side. They don't want to be ostracized if they're on the wrong side. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what I do. I have to talk about it. it. These are some of the most uncomfortable conversations I've ever had to have. Right. It's this whole goon squad thing. As, as a guy that is out and about and friends with a lot of cops and very part oh. member of the of the community it it ain't easy but sometimes you got to pick the right side and, yeah. and you got you got to go with your gut and that's what i've chosen to do well i i had someone interesting i had a conversation with someone the, the other day and they just said outright um i think that law enforcement should have absolute immunity no matter what they do and i didn't i responded i said well i think if they commit a criminal act they should be prosecuted as criminals. And that's kind of you know, my take on it. And I don't think, I think, I would think most people would agree with that. You know? I, I think that's somebody that has been drinking the Kool Aid way too much. If they think anybody should be able to do anything with absolute immunity, mm-hmm. it, it, that's great yeah. until it happens to you. Exactly, yeah. until it's your son or daughter, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I also wonder, too, uh, speaking of the tension and the anxiety of the community with with people and the sheriff's department or just law. I mean, this extends not to just the sheriff's department because people don't know sometimes do I'm getting pulled over. They, You know, whether it's a Pearl police officer, or Brandon police officer, they all lump them, everybody in together. I mean, what does that do for businesses that want to move to Rankin County or people that are wanting to oh, – you got to yeah. think that, you know, this got, is the, the New York – The Chamber of Commerce is not going to be happy, be happy about some of this, right? You, you know, I mean, what does it do your property value if you already a home there? And I think, you know, this is an article the New York Times, as, as you very well know, you guys are running all the time. And mm. it's it's put this kind of, like, again, black cloud on Rankin County, and it's got to have hurt every aspect of it, which is, which sucks. But put it that way, it sucks. It's horrible for everybody there because you got – you know, I went to high school there. You got tons of great people there, and that are not yeah. involved in this, and they're yeah. all getting affected by it. Well, the other thing is that you know, you, on, on that end, there's going to be some lawsuits 
some very, oh, there already are, yeah, and yeah. there will be more. There's going to be mm-hmm. some large, large lawsuits, and that's all going to be paid for by the taxpayers. What, Absolutely. What services do we do we have to take from to pay for these? Do property taxes get raised? When you're talking about thirty, forty, fifty million dollars potentially. I don't know. I mean, I've heard crazy numbers. By the time, it's well, there's a four hundred million dollar lawsuit. Not that they're going to yeah. get it. Okay. Yeah. Does insurance cover all this? That's another issue. I think. I too, think or? the insurance only covers a. What a couple of million, something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, I mean it's it's not much. Like it's not it's not it's not a four hundred million dollar policy. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it that way. Yeah, and it's like what public services do you start having to skimp from? Is yeah. it law enforcement? Is it fire? Is it both? Is it public works? You know, yeah. well, you could where, potentially where you could easily potentially see a class action lawsuit in this. Mm-hmm. You know, given the goon squad's activities over a period of time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, do they uh, do the traffic signals not work like Jackson Clay? You know, after a while, like <laughs> County, they can have the same problem. Well, I mean, we look, I'm so scarred about that side of it, having just moved out of Jackson two or three years ago, and still covering Jackson every day. Is I've seen what happens when you don't, when you can't afford to pay attention to these things like they need to be, mm-hmm. and then. Crime starts sl- cr- sl- sl- cr- back, slipping in. Yeah. You know, one of the big things, like one of the big conflicts people have is, okay, I know what they did was wrong, but Rankin County sure is a safe place to live right. because of that fear that's been instilled into people who don't want to come around here. And, you know, one of the big things right. of this show is FAFO, F around, find out. And and I get that. But I, I just the human being in me says that you don't do it like this. No. The, the, Madison's safe. Yeah. Right. They, they're not doing it like that. I can right. think of a hundred other places that are safe and aren't doing it like that. They're not using dildos to enforce the law. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's pretty awful. Yeah. All right, let's take a break, come back, land the plane for the day with Jerry Mitchell and Sean yurk on The Clay Edwards Show. Welcome back into The Clay Edwards Show. We're live here on WYAB. Guys, as always, I just want to thank all our great sponsors here. I didn't get to run a whole lot of them off today. I didn't want to waste a lot of time, or I don't want to call it wasting time, but I didn't want to take a lot of time from getting to hear Jerry talk. Uh, again, we got Jerry Mitchell, Mississippi Day. we got Sean Yurkaran here. Jerry, we appreciate the time. And, yeah, sure. Yep, thanks. Um, the work you guys did on this. and I, I mean, Yeah, I, I, Brian and Nate, uh, I mean, they've done the vast majority of it. They've just done a fantastic job with, uh, and they're continuing to work in this area. So, again, if anyone has any information, pl- please email me at uh, – Letter J and then Mitchell M I T C H E L L at Mississippi Today dot O R G. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I got a feeling this is not going to be something that goes away anytime. No, soon. it's is- not, and, and and it raises issues. I think beyond just Rankin County. You know what? Uh, you know, as we were talking about earlier. You know, are, are we arresting drug users or you know drug dealers or drug users or you know how are we approaching? It really does raise some interesting questions, I think. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I could do a whole other hour just going back to the criminal justice side of this, and I, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan with the way we do stuff. And do I have a better solution? I do not. And do I think we should just let drug users roam free? I do not. But what we're doing is clearly not working. Time to raise the white flag and surrender and figure something else out. Yeah. Um, Jerry, again, thank you. Well, thanks, guys. Sean, thanks. thank you. Guys, get out to Martin's downtown today. If you're in Hines County and want to get a great lunch, it's been there for 70 years. Uh, that's about right, right? 70 yeah, years? Yeah, 70 years. You know, I don't even have to tell you where it is. Either you know where Martin's is or you don't. Yeah. Um, they did just open up their new Martin's Market. It's the gas station as they get ready to open up the new bar and restaurant there at the town of Livingston. They took over the gas station. It's right there on the corner of 463 and 22. I ran into the boss man himself when I stopped by there. The other day. Oh, you've been up there already? Yep. yep. Oh, okay. I had to go by to the men's clinic uh, Friday and stop by there on the way and mm. saw the boss man. And uh, they tried to sell me a, a sausage and biscuit and, or a chicken biscuit, some kind of biscuit. They're serving fresh breakfast biscuits up there. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, they've expanded it out. It's really nice. It's a full service gas station. That's cool. So if you don't want to have to get out your car, they got a nice fellow there that's pumping your gas. And look, I'm just going to be honest. I don't think it cost any more there than it did anywhere else. And usually full service costs extra. All right. Jerry Mitchell, thank you. Sean Yerkeron. Thank you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe. Be blessed. Peace out.